a member of the public has collapsed near the sand dunes and is noticed by a lifesaver. On approach to the patient, the lifesaver puts on their gloves and surveys the scene for any danger to themselves, the patient or any bystanders. Finding no danger, the lifesaver now checks the responsiveness of the patient. Can you hear me? Open your eyes. What's your name? Squeeze my hands. No response. On finding the patient unresponsive, patrol, the lifesaver calls patrol and uses the four P's to advise the patrol captain of the situation. Patrol, patrol, this is Rove North, over. This is patrol, go ahead Rove North, over. I've got an unconscious patient up at the northern end of the beach. I'm about to check airways and breathing. Please send assistance, defib and oxyviva. Rove North, I've dispatched two additional lifesavers to your location with defib and oxy. Please keep me informed of progress. Patrol clear. Wilco, Rove North, clear. The lifesaver now assesses Checking the patient's the airway. airway and breathing. The placement and control of jaw support is an important part of any good resuscitation. The chin of the patient should sit on your middle finger with your thumb across the indent of the patient's chin. Your index finger lies along their jawline. Ensure your fingers are not pressed against the patient's throat at any stage. If you raise your elbow, your fingers will move away from the throat of the patient. Once head tilt is in place, the lifesaver visually checks the mouth area for any obstruction. And if nothing is there, commences checking for breathing by looking for movement of the patient's chest, listening for any sounds the patient is making, and feeling any air moving against your cheek. Once the lifesaver has determined that the patient is not breathing and the airway is clear, they can now commence CPR. The aim of CPR is to compress the heart to continue the flow of blood throughout the system, as the blood contains oxygen, thereby ensuring oxygen is flowing to the brain. The correct compression point in CPR is vitally important. To obtain the correct compression point, visualise the centre of the patient's chest and compress there. One, two, three, four, five, six, Applying seven, pressure eight, from your shoulder eight, nine, ten, straight 11, through the heel 12, of your hand and using the weight of your body to deliver compressions will be easier and less tiring than trying to use your arm. The other hand is placed securely on top of the pad hand with fingers and thumb secured around the wrist or your fingers interlocked. The depth of compression should be one third of the chest. For compression on a child, one hand is used to compress the chest at the same depth and rate as you would on an adult. For compressions on an infant, two fingers are used at the same depth and rate as an adult. When performing rescue breathing, place your mouth over the infant's nose and mouth, and with a slightly open mouth, puff in just enough air to cause the chest to rise. At the end of 30 compressions, the lifesaver now moves to two rescue breaths. The lifesaver moves closer to the patient's shoulder, leans in towards the patient and places the mask on the patient, then rotates their hands to hold the mask in position while applying jaw thrust to open the airway. The lifesaver applies two breaths, breath. breathing one full portion of the breath. air within their lungs and after each breath, checking that the patient's chest is rising. One, two, three, Once the rescue four, breaths five, have been completed, six, seven, the lifesaver returns immediately to the next set of 30 compressions and continues alternating between 30 compressions and two rescue breaths per cycle. This equals approximately 100 compressions per minute, with five cycles every two minutes, until the patient either begins breathing normally or has been taken into the care of a doctor or ambulance personnel, or the lifesaver is physically unable to continue or an authorised person declares the patient deceased. When additional support arrives, it is important that CPR is continued until all equipment is prepared and the DFib operator instructs all personnel to stand clear.